Welcome to the Sales Lead Dog Podcast, hosted by CRM technology and sales process expert, Christopher Smith, talking with sales leaders that have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Listen to find out how the best of the best achieve success with their team and CRM technology. And remember, unless you are the lead dog, the view never changes. Welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Today, I have joining me, Matt Page. Matt, welcome to Sales Lead Dog. Hey, Chris, thanks for having me today. So Matt is the Vice President of Marketing and Strategy for Hatchworks in, in Atlanta. Uh, Matt, tell me about your role in it at Hatchworks and, and about Hatchworks. Yeah, it's, it's taken some different paths. So I've played roles in product, uh, customer engagement, and then in strategy and my latest in marketing. So it all kind of weaves together. But at Hatchworks, you know, we design and build software solutions. Both your customer and, and business will love through our integrated U.S. and nearshore agile teams. And, and that's the big piece. We want the any product we build to actually be usable, delight your customers, but actually, you know, work for your business, make some money, <laughs> everything you want to do there. Um, what's interesting as of late are Nearshore Agile teams have just blown up, right? It's it's uh, ever since the pandemic, having teams down in Latin America, you don't have to be in an office anymore. So um, being able to align around time zone has just changed the game um, out there today. So it's been an interesting kind of business model uh, shift, or I guess business line that's really grown like crazy for us since the uh, pandemic and everything hit. Yeah, oh, and I, it's the same from our world as, as well. It's... it's uh... When I started my business in 07, we were 100% virtual from day one, mm. and it was completely foreign to everybody. But now, because of the pandemic, it's the new, it's the way everyone's doing it. So that's awesome. It, it's funny how, you know, something like that, it, it, it just forced everybody into it. And we all just kind of figured out, hey, this, this actually yep. can be done and it works. And yep. a lot of folks don't want to go back. <laughs> no, no, exactly. And, yep. and, uh, and organizations have to adapt to this new reality. You know, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, it impacts selling, it impacts marketing, your messaging, everything. It's it's a whole new world. That's the interesting thing, too. You know, you mentioned impact selling. Like back in the day, especially in our world, you know, you would be at a client, you would walk the halls, you'd see people in person, and the, the halls are empty now, right? So it's a lot of it shifted to that. Uh, this virtual spaces, LinkedIn. Yep. Um, I've started getting more active on there, meeting a lot of cool folks on there, but it's just uh, where people hang out is is different now. Oh, it's amazing. We have a partner here in town that they have a whole floor of a skyscraper. Every time I go over there, maybe two or three people yeah. on the yeah. whole floor. Yeah, I've talked oh. to some friends and they're, you know, they they do kind of the the split model and they they go to the yeah. office and they they sit on Zoom there. It's yeah. the same thing, different location. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good deal. Well, Matt, tell me, how did you get started in, in this, on your journey to uh, VP of Marketing and Strategy? Yeah. Like I said, it's kind of been a roundabout journey, right? Um, I didn't, you know, start coming out of college, say I wanted to be in marketing. And um, I, frankly, I was a finance major. And I kind of just didn't uh, go that route at all. I think I found my first job. Some a friend posted something on Facebook, so they were hiring and and worked out. Uh, but I got into the product and analytics side of things. Really love building products, uh, products that you know customers enjoy using. Um, and then from there, got into the strategy side of things. Uh, so starting to connect those dots around building products and then the strategy piece with value prop, you know, how do people buy, uh, having a narrative and that kind of naturally transitioned into marketing. So, uh, you know, have, I think having those different facets of understanding just makes you more dynamic, whether you're a salesperson, whether you're in marketing, whether you're an engineer. Um, so I think that's a big piece of it. And, you know, what's great about what you're doing is I, I really believe and I've learned just through what I do to be able to sell, you have to be able to put yourself in the shoes of your customer. You have to sit in their chair. You have to live their world and really understand the pain that they feel and what their, what their life is like. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't connect that way, you're going to struggle. Yeah. And so I imagine coming from the world of product and product development, you really have to put yourself in those same shoes. Yeah. And, and you hit on it too. It's, it's focusing in on that pain. Like nobody, nobody wants to be sold um, 
take it from somebody that get, gets pitch, pitch slapped a lot, you know, where you just get the cold pitch. Don't do it, right? Build the relationship first. Um, offer up some value first. Build that rapport. Uh, I, I can tell you, I've had folks who go that route, and I'm always willing to talk to them, have a conversation, and I end up learning a lot versus folks that do the cold pitch. And, you know, there, there is some value in that if you get a really strong value prop, but it's a lot harder sell. And I think it gets back to that piece, right? You got to hone in on what's the pain that your customer is experiencing. And how are you going to get them through that? Like, what's this, you know, ideal future, magical future? You're gonna, you're gonna take them through, transform them along that journey. Oh yeah. Um, so, very excited to have you have you here on Sales Lead Dog because I, you know, we've talked about this before we started the recording here that to be a successful sales leader, you have to be a team player, and your counterpart on the team, the other the the offense to your defense or your defense to your offense, however you want to put it, it's marketing. And if you don't have a, that strong connection, that strong alignment, and uh, where you guys, both groups are working together and going in the same direction, you're going to struggle. So talking from your position as VP of marketing, how do you create that alliance, that, that alignment with sales? Yeah, and you hit on it. It's a, it's a team sport. I mean, you can't tell I'm sitting down, but I'm I'm six foot eight. I played basketball my whole life, and it's true. You got to be able to work together. Uh, I think you know how I came up uh, was unique in the fact that I kind of came from the business side. Like you know, I learned how to um, run a P and L. You know, you understand those different levers and dynamics. Uh, and I didn't start working with sales until later on in my career, and I. You know, I think people would throw stuff at me if they could, uh, but I kind of undervalued what what sales did and how hard it was, you know, you know, make some cold calls and it's easy. Right. But once you start really honing in on what it takes to be great at sales, it, it's not it's not for the faint of heart and it's not an easy job. Uh, but you hit on it, though. you know, for marketing, I want to see uh, the way we view it as marketing is a partner to sales. Right. It's very much, um, you know, what's our, our common purpose? What's our core goal? Um, which say, let's say it's revenue. Right. You know, what marketing us as marketing being accountable for that as well. You know, I don't want to just be accountable for, hey, I, I generated a thousand marketing qualified leads, you know, go us, uh, which none of those lead to any type of deals or revenue. That, that's kind of productive. And it, you know, you get some infighting and then it's just, you know not a fun environment to be in. So as much as we can collaborate with sales, uh, the better. Oh, yeah. So how do you as a leader in marketing, you know, work with your counterpart in sales? Or how do you create that bond and that connection? Yeah, so the way I view sales, it's like a secret weapon that uh, so many marketers do not take advantage of, right? You literally have people talking to customers every single day. Um, and it's hard as marketers to get in front of customers, but your salespeople are talking to customers. Go talk to your salespeople. Uh, and that's what we started doing at Cadence of uh, interacting with our sales folks, getting that feedback loop in there. Uh, and they, they understand what's resonating. What's the pain of their buyer? Are we even targeting the right ideal customer? You know, th they are literally on the the ground floor when it comes to that stuff. So if you're not engaging with your sales team, if you're not working with your sales team, you're, you're missing out on so much uh, opportunity. Yeah. Let's flip the coin. How should sales be coming to marketing saying uh, we need to work together? How, how should that happen? Yeah, it's a, it's a good uh, point as well, because, you know, marketing's not just a hey, let's build a pretty deck. Um, you know, give me some materials. I need X, Y, Z. <laughs> It's, it's that collaboration piece. It's coming together. It's talking about those pain points. And then how do we turn that into a message and a value prop that somebody will actually be interested in? Well, let's, let's, let's not even go to interested in buying, interested in giving you, you know, 15 seconds of their busy time to just even pay attention. Let's start there, right? So that's the key piece is um, view them as a partner. Yes, you know, we're creating the sales enablement materials, but uh, have a discussion, you know, get to know those folks. Um, marketing folks can be a bit quirky sometimes. Sales folks can too, so I think they, they can jive really <laughs> nicely together. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the, the piece, collaboration. And 
I think for anything like any relationship, this is not one shot deal, right? It, this should be ongoing. There should be a regular cadence. What kind of cadence do you like to establish with your sales counterpart? Yeah, so we have a weekly meeting where we have this feedback loop in place. Um, and then we have a monthly cadence where we go, we go deep. And we actually do this with all areas in our organization, our recruiting, uh, our, our engineering, uh, different, different areas. And we, the work that we do in marketing, we run it actually in an agile manner. So we do two week sprints. It's it, kind of everything at Hatchworks, we do it in an agile way. Our recruiting team works in sprints. Our development team works in sprints. Marketing does as well. Uh, so we like to align kind of ceremonies in effect, those feedback loops uh, with our, our agile process from a marketing standpoint. So sales is just another one of those, those feedback loops for us. Nice. Um, what are some of your lessons learned, key lessons learned from uh, in your role as VP marketing when it comes to working with sales? Yeah, uh, key lessons learned. So I would say sales is a lot harder than people give it credit for. Uh, you know, collaborate with sales, listen to what they have to say. Um, and, you know, the biggest thing is just becoming one with your customer, understanding where they're coming from. And, uh, you know, also talk to your customers. Sales, uh, if, you, if you're a salesperson out there, have that mindset when you're talking to folks, you know, and, and marketing can help with this, but shift your mindset a bit when you're talking to customers so you can provide that feedback to marketing and have that collaboration point. Like what, what things are you hearing? There's a lot of cues customers will give you uh, that you may not pick up at first, but if you start to have a, have a keen ear for things, there's whole like lines of business, lines, uh, you know, opportunity that are there for the taking if you just listen. Does, do you ever in your role in marketing go on sales calls? Yes. Yeah. So um, I work a lot of the time on the, the pitches we're doing with customers. Uh, we haven't started recording all the conversations that have tools like Gong and all those out there. I want to start uh, getting into that. We had uh, one of our marketing managers uh, Andy Smith that joined the team back in April, he sat in, in a, a sales conversation with a client and he was just like blown away. Like, you know, hearing how the client talks, how the customer talks in a proposal, uh, it, it, it was eye opening for him. So we're trying to figure out how can we operationally, you know, build this into our process. That's mm -hmm. how I think about a lot of things, right? How can you operationally build these things in? So it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. It's just, part of how we work, right? Yep, yep. Um, what about the handoff from marketing to sales? Let's kind of maybe get into some of the tactical things. You know, marketing's doing a lot of work, as you're saying, trying to develop those MQLs, mm -hmm. um, crushing it in that arm, but now you got to do a handoff to sales. What's your uh, experience with, with setting up that process and managing that process? Yeah, so what we like to do is provide them as much insight as we can. A, we don't want to feed them uh, non-quality leads. Like if we know it's not a quality lead, we're not sending it over. Uh, so we have uh, an opportunity review that we actually go in and, and fill out as much detail on the company, the customer, uh, where they're coming from before we even get it over to sales. I mean, a lot of the times we like to think of it as, you know, we're setting up the pins so sales can knock them down. And it's not a throw it over the fence type of thing. You know, we're working with sales throughout that process just so we have that that partnership with them. I like that setting up the pins to knock them down. Um, Cause that really is, I think that is absolutely the right perspective that, uh, you know, the, you're doing all this work to, uh, to generate this stuff, but anyone who's been in your role know a lot of the stuff that you guys end up getting it. It's, you know, it, they're not the right, match you know it could just be bad data or whatever but you also get the companies that they're just like you know this isn't our target customer or what you know someone we can really work well with so someone's got to take a look at that stuff because the last thing you want to do is is feed that stuff over to sales and have them say guys this is garbage and then they just shut the door on you mm -hmm. uh, have you ever had that happen have you learned the hard way about that and and can you talk about that a little bit yeah, sometimes uh, I think it gets back to the the partnership, right? And just uh, being aligned on the process 
up front because I've, I've been in areas where the, there is no real process and it's kind of havoc and you know people are they're either making it up on the fly or they have their own interpretation of the process which creates conflict and it's kind of unnecessary uh, conflict but, but yeah and it's it's funny you know one of the best sellers I've ever met is Brandon Powell Powell he's the founder of our company right he can rattle off off the hatchwork story better than anybody else but I, I'm sure it's the same with you you know starting your own company it's it's uh and I didn't realize this starting out like it's it's a foundational thing no matter who you are if you're starting a company you got to be able to sell I don't know if anything from your side that um when you were getting started starting your company uh anything that was uh, interesting in terms of you know that mindset getting something off the ground oh yeah it's um I don't come from a, a sales background. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I've learned by falling on my face a whole lot of times and, uh, and learning from that. And, uh, um, you know, what doing the thing of like, okay, where did I screw up? Where did I go wrong? What, you know, what's my takeaway for the next one? So I don't do that again. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I wish I was more like uh, a Brandon, you know, where, but I just, you know, I have a diff I came on a different path. And, but yeah. it does come back to the same point of you better know your customer mm -hmm. and who it is you're going after. And you better have a, a, a value proposition that resonates with them. Yeah. If you don't, you know, you're just spinning your wheels and like, you've got to start there. You've got to get that dialed in. You better have your messaging dialed in. And that's again, another key point that I've learned sales working hand in hand with marketing that I have to give that information to them as I learn things as I and I hear from my customers all the time when I'm talking mm -hmm. to people they'll say something I'm writing that down and I'm immediately forwarding that on to my marketing team saying I just heard the best thing from a client we need to use this in our messaging yeah. um, do you get that same kind of you know it sounds like you're getting that today um, but has that evolved for you over time or is that just something you learned early on in your career yeah, um, it's evolved over time. You know, and I'd say sales folks, the, the best way to get marketing engaged, give them some of those good nuggets you hear from your customers and that's that's how to do it. But, you know, like I said, I came from a product background and the whole thing is, you know, ship something early, you know, uh, if you're not embarrassed with your first version of your product, then you ship too late type of thing. You want to get those feedback loops started. So um, I've had that mindset from the product side of things and I've tried to transfer it to the marketing and, and sales side. And I had to learn the hard way. Like I've, I've built products before where I tried to gold plate it, you know, the one more feature trap, you just keep adding and adding. And um, it, it's, you know, Somebody can tell you something a million times, but back to your point until you actually fall on your face and experience it, you know, sometimes you, you need that to, uh, to learn. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the, uh, I want to be careful how you say this, cause, uh, but what's the worst experience you've had interacting with sales? Mm. Have you had any just really bad experiences working with sales? That's a good one. I, you know, there's not as many like internally sales teams I've worked with that I can think of, but I've definitely had plenty with folks trying to to pitch me. If oh, that's great. Let's talk about that. I love that. Yeah. I do that yeah. all the time. Yeah. So um, the, uh, you know, the, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. You add me on LinkedIn. Uh, and before we can, I even know who you are. It's, you know, trying to sell me something. Uh, the cold email trying to sell me something. And again, strong value prop. And if you've done your homework, that can work, right? right. And that's the big piece on the sales side. If if you know your ICP, if you know um, the, the value prop and the pain point this customer has, yep. then it can work. The cold, cold piece can work. Yep. Uh, one of the biggest things I've learned on the strategy side of things, though, is, you know, people want to talk about, you know, what's my ideal customer? So, People think, okay, what size of company? What's their industry? Uh, you know, these these kind of firmographic type things, demographic type things. That's that's not what you need to know. You, you need to know what are those triggers? What are those um, pain points that your customer experience experiences? If you can hone in and find customers when they reach that pain, 
you know, your gold, right? And the, the one thing I've came across you know, relatively recently is uh, the different stages of awareness. And there's like five stages, right? It's, yeah. it's unaware. Like, I don't even know that I have a pain point or problem or I, I don't want to acknowledge it. Uh, it's problem aware. Okay, I know I got a problem. Uh, solution aware. I know there are solutions out there that can solve my problem. And then most aware, I think is the last one. You know, I've kind of got down to a short list. Uh, and from a marketing perspective, you know, and sales, not everybody's going to be ready to buy. Not everybody's going to be in that most aware stage uh, when you want them to be. So the key thing is you want to make sure you're top of mind when they get there. Yep. All right. So it gets back to that, you know, don't, don't pitch slap me, get to know me, uh, hone in on that. Yep. And that's where marketing can really help you as, as a salesperson, as a sales leader, is that I've, I've talked, you know, cause doing what I do selling CRM, I've dealt with the sales teams that like, Hey, I, I sent that guy an email. He never responded. Mm -hmm. One email isn't going to do it. One phone call isn't yeah. going to do it. You yeah. know, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a strategy about how you're going to go after that customer. That's where you leverage the marketing team that say, help me, you know, come up with some messaging where that's going to resonate. And because we know who they are, we're, we know they probably have these problems, but no one's going to pick up the phone, you know, and call you after one email, you know, yeah. so. And there's different, uh, like with, with our at Hatchworks, our deal sizes are usually bigger. Right. So nobody's buying off of one, one touch no. point, one email. Right. I mean, some, there's some, you know, free trial, uh, you know, uh, lower investment type of products that, that, that does work kind of more of a product led right. deal. Um, but you hit, you hit the nail on the head, right. It's okay. We got a client. This is a good target for us. Let's work with marketing. Let's have multiple touch points, kind of map out the, the customer. Um, it's a big, uh, big part of it. Oh yeah. And, and hitting them across channels. Um, you know, it's not just email. Um, it's not just, Hey, I sent you a connect message on LinkedIn. Bye for me. Um, you know, that, that's the thing that, um, you know, what amazes me is how you see these shifts in how people, the tactics and late, you know, lately, really, I think the last, like, to me, it's blown up during COVID, but LinkedIn, you know, people trying to engage with me and, and sell to me over LinkedIn and how just incredibly ineffective it's become because there's just so much noise. Yeah. From your position with marketing and strategy and trying to break through that noise, how, what's your approach for breaking through all that noise? Yeah, so I think it's uh, being authentic, right? Let's take LinkedIn for an example. Yeah. Um, a really good book I came across recently, a founder brand by Dave Gearhart is an awesome uh, piece on this, but we're working with our, our um, uh, CEO, Brandon, on this. And he's, he's, he's already you know, done this in the past, but really trying to amplify it, building his brand on LinkedIn. And it's not about Hatchworks, 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 Hatchworks. Mm -hmm. It's tell your story, you know, talk about what you've experienced. Yes, it should have a tie to your value prop and what you do. But I, I like the 80-20 rule, like give me 80% of value content, your perspective, the pain you've experienced, and maybe sprinkle in about 20% of Hatchworks. Because at the end of the day, if you provide people value, yep. you build an audience, if they get to know who you are, well, they're, they're naturally talking about LinkedIn. You know, They're going to go mm -hmm. look at your profile and see what you, yep. where you work and all of that. And you've built that connection, right? Yep. And I've had, uh, just in the past month, we've had several uh, opportunities come in just through LinkedIn. Right. And it's people he knows and it, it just triggers them. Right. It's, oh, yeah, uh, Brandon's at Hatchworks. I, I have this pain point in this need. Yep. And they're actually coming to you. You're generating yes. demand versus trying to you know do cold outreach. And that's the key. You hit it right on the head. That's what I've learned is that it's not about trying to uh, get them to engage, you know, respond to your stuff. It's you've got to find a way for them to come to you through LinkedIn or whatever tool, you know, you're leveraging. LinkedIn's a great example of it though. If you're giving value, if you're putting stuff out there that's helping people, they are going to find you and come to you. Yeah. Yeah. One thing I uh, tell my daughters, you attract more bees with honey, right? Then, yeah. then vinegar, you know, provide that value, provide something right. sweet, something good. Yep. Uh, a lot uh, people like that a lot more. Yep. Now, 
when you go to Matt's LinkedIn profile, um, he's shared a recent post. How is the puppy doing? Oh my gosh. So uh, yeah, for you, for those of y'all that don't know, my mother-in-law <laughs> just got a, a brand new puppy and uh, going into it, it's my mother-in-law's dog, right? I, yeah. I, we have a dog, we have an eight, eight month old at home. We don't need a second dog. But the dog spent the night at our house last night, and I'm afraid it may yeah. it may find its way to our house. So I'm trying to make sure there's that line of separation. But it's <laughs> hard to say no to a, a six-year-old with a puppy. Yep. But you know what I liked about that, Matt, is you're not just posting business stuff on LinkedIn. You're posting about you on LinkedIn. And uh, that's another way for people to get to know you and, and uh, connect with you, right? Yeah, and one of the biggest things I've learned and really kind of recently too, I mean, uh, is, is people buy from people. It's, it's basic, it's simple, but it's true, right? That people don't buy from brands, they buy from people. I don't care if you're a CEO or VP. Uh, and it's funny, we, we've done as of late uh, customer interviews, kind of leveraging the jobs to be done framework. If you're not familiar with it, just Google it. It's an awesome approach. Uh, but talking to our customers and one of the things we ask them is, you know, how do you decide who to pick? And it's without fail. It's, I've either worked with this, you know, company or person before. I know them, I trust them, or somebody has referred them to me without fail. Even the people that say, oh, I Googled it, they circle back to, well, actually somebody, you know, provided a referral. So for anybody in sales, you know, and sales folks know this, it's the relationship, right? That's the big piece there trust social proof on the marketing side yeah. is something we're really starting to hone in on and leverage um, goes a long way. Yep. Yep. Um, we haven't talked about CRM at all. I want to kind of loop that into the conversation yeah. um, as an organization. Um, what's working well for you guys when it comes to CRM and what are you guys struggling with when it comes to CRM? Yeah. So this is an area, it's a pain point for us being completely honest. So uh, we have leveraged uh, several kind of outside partners in the past uh, for marketing. We recently brought it in-house and you can kind of see their, their touch on it throughout our, our uh, HubSpot, the platform we're on now. Um, but for us, it's, it's getting back to basics, right? We want to make sure our, our contacts are filled out. They're in the right stage Our pi pipeline uh, in, in deal flow is, um, uh, in the right spots. And we actually went through and kind of reorganized and re kind of structured our, our deal flow. Uh, and really it was about simplicity. We cut out like four steps. Um, I don't know from your perspective, but simplicity always wins in my book. Oh, uh, amen. Yeah. Um, uh, that's been the main thing. Uh, so trying to get our lists clean, uh, and then, you know, starting to see how we on the marketing side can start to segment some of those lists and work directly with sales uh, to do some more targeted approaches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the worst I've seen, we had a client had over 300 fields on their opportunities. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm like, that's insane. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. There's, you know, it, it just ridiculous. And, and it, it is about because it has to be usable, right? Mm -hmm. And it has to be you know, easy to pick up, easy to manage, and you need your data to be right. So it, it's simple doesn't mean it's only four fields. Yeah. Simple means it's focused and aligned with your strategy and supports your strategy. So it's easy to use. To me, that's simple. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you have that alignment where people start to get away from simple is when CRM isn't set up to support your sales process or your marketing process. So then you have all these workarounds and all these other things that you have to do to make it work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but if you're spending that time and creating that alignment to strategy, um, it does become easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And people assume that, you know, it's technology that fixes problems. No, oh, technology yeah. does not fix problems. It, it will <laughs> uncover your, uh, your, your process inefficiencies, but back to your point on simplicity, like they've, I'm kind of like a, a, um, a bit of a nerd when it comes to like, you know, how human nature and how the brain works and all this. They've done studies with this where, you know, I think it was like with jelly, uh, they offered up 10 types of jelly, right? You know, more variety, more things to choose from. And then they, in the other uh, group they offered, I think it was like three choices, 
the one with three sold like it was, you know, twice as much or something crazy like yeah. that. But same when you're trying to ask somebody to fill, fill something out. Oh, yeah. Too many fields, they're not going to do it. No. And it's not, you know, it's going to be complete. It's going to be wrong because they're going to rush or whatever. And, and uh, it, it really is about doing that work to really understand what do we need to move the deal forward. And I, I, I see that all the time, which is said, I have yet to see technology mm -hmm. fix the problem. It'll put a big old um, spotlight on it. And also technology is not going to fix bad process. Uh, process should be supported by your platform, but it should not define your plat your process, you know, and, and uh, I think that's another common pain point. That's coming from two guys that actually have built and, and build software for a living, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know. I, I have clients come to me all the time, like, so what, you know, what's going on? Why, why do you, why do you want CRM? And like, oh, you know, our sales process, blah, blah, they'll immediately launch it and like, we need to fix this, 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 and this. And I'm like, guys, you know, let's take a step back here. Walk me through your process. And then you find out like, well, we really don't have a process or, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's chaos and they're hoping technology is going to organize their chaos. And that's just, there's no shortcuts. There's no silver bullets. You've got to do the hard work. It's the same with marketing. It's the same with sales. Mm -hmm. I, I wish there were silver bullets for marketing or sales or technology. There just aren't. It always comes down to hard work. If you, if you find any, let me know. But uh, <laughs> the, what, what's funny though is like for sales folks, the solution selling component, and you hit on it, right? If you're yeah. a salesperson and you can actually help provide that value up front before you even trying to sell the thing, like you mentioned the process, yeah. understanding that, like that's gold for your whether it's like an implementation team, developers, or depending on what type of um, solution you have, you know, that's, that's an awesome way uh, to go about it if you're on the sales side. Oh, totally. Because then I'm not selling anymore. I'm becoming their partner. I'm, I'm here to partner yeah. with you to, to fix mm -hmm. your problems. And, uh, you know, I'm here to help. It's a complete reframing of how they view you. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. totally. Well, Matt, we're on our time here on Sales Lead Dog. Yeah. It's been great having you on and listening to you and really getting the perspective from the marketing side. If people want to reach out and connect with you, if they want to learn more about Hatchworks, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, easiest way, uh, find me on LinkedIn, Matt Page, spelled P-A-I-G-E. Uh, emails Matt at Hatchworks.com, pretty easy there. Uh, I'm on Twitter, but I kind of just use it as a scratch pad for my, my LinkedIn. Uh, so, uh, and then Hatchworks, Hatchworks.com. Uh, LinkedIn is where you'll find us doing the most activity. And and yeah, that's those are the ways to uh, to find us. Yeah, that's awesome. And we'll have, if you didn't catch any of that, we'll have it all in our show notes. EmpellerCRM.com forward slash sales lead dog. You'll find Matt's episode along with uh, all our others. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Uh, Matt, again, thanks for coming on Sales Lead Dog and welcome to the pack. Yeah, I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for having me. As we end this discussion on Sales Lead Dog, be sure to subscribe to catch all our episodes. On social media, follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Watch the videos on YouTube. And you can also find our episodes on our website at impellercrm.com forward slash sales lead dog. Sales Lead Dog is supported by Impeller CRM, delivering objectively better CRM for business, guaranteed.